a group existing worldwide, focusing on a specific cultural area and a specific time. So, of course, maybe one might, might say there is no model and no guidelines to follow. Some of which we are trying to figure out um, this afternoon. So, uh, this morning and after lunch break, we heard seven interesting papers around the topic. Um, only the first one, I think, by Ian Cross had a change topic <clears throat> that was now entitled Paleoacoustics, Materials and Approaches. Um, I'll try to summarize the main points discussed. Hats is burning. <laughs> it was not easy to get this down uh, in half an hour. Um, and also put it uh, somehow in an order and this hopefully might lead to the formulation of research questions later on. The main points that were touched and subsequently should be discussed are, in my view, um, the individual approaches and methods to be applied and the individual objectives and of course also the preliminary results. I emphasize individual here as so far in my view there is no common approach, method or objective that has been established. Um, at first I will focus on the individual approaches. Having a serious scientific approach True interdisciplinarity between all parties involved should be achieved. So the question is, again, what are we doing and how, we are, how are we doing it? And um, at some point Ian Cross added, added also, where are we doing it? Methodology has long been discussed in music archaeology and there are many attempts published since um, the early 80s, uh, some of which are to be found in the conference volumes that Graham Lawson brought and also in other um, printed media. So all this uh, can be checked in the libraries. The individual approaches can be focused, as we saw this morning, on archaeoacoustics of finds, such as flintstones, only to give one example, or archaeological structures such as stone circles or Roman theaters. Sometimes also a combination is possible. For instance, uh, if there is a musical find within a particular archaeological structure, then we are all very happy. Another approach could be the reconstruction of ancient musical instruments. That is something that this morning um, has not been discussed. And there's also a approach combining all the possibilities uh, that we currently have, including art. And uh, that is um, what Aaron Watson called uh, multimedia archaeology. I like this concept. That is capturing and communicating sensory experiences. But often enough, one must say, um, one, has, one has not enough data to establish such highly sophisticated artistic outputs. So we heard these and other individual approaches, some of which are highly advanced, especially when it comes to acoustics. But how to link these? As Ian Cross said, 
there's almost everything that needs to be done in this field. Although I must say, yet much has been done, but certainly not enough. Somehow one must start, and it would probably be a good idea to establish work groups. As Graham Lawson added, there are many ways of getting to the same points. A statement closely related to interdisciplinarity. So I think it would be best if in such work groups, um, con uh, if, su if such work groups consist of members of each relevant discipline. Of course, some simple questions need always to be answered before uh, setting up methods and approaches. So, what time span should be covered? Uh, at first, um, in the first, uh, when you uh, set up the schedule for today, uh, I saw the time span 10,000 BC to 1,000 AD. Uh, 1,000 BC, okay. Um, then, the question, should all archaeological sites with acoustical properties be mapped? When coming down to particular sites, the question must be, how did this particular site, uh, no sorry, uh, how did this particular site transform over time? Are there phases of construction? And if so, how changed the acoustical properties? Then, which specific musical instruments were played at that specific time, around that specific place? Is there archaeological or iconographical evidence? Next question, how were these instruments played? Then, a crucial question, was the described effect intentional? Or was it just a welcomed additional effect? What was the purpose of the effect? One must be aware that many of these questions sometimes cannot be answered anymore, and that there's always the risk of speculation, especially Therefore, one, mu one must be extremely conscious what to do with the obtained information, to what extent interpretation might lead without losing ground. Skepticism should not be taken as a rejection, but as a challenge. In my view, only true interdisciplinarity in research teams including acousticians, physicians, archaeologists, music archaeologists, musicians, multimedia artists, and so on, will reduce these risks, which otherwise might lead to mis miscredits within the scientific community. To demonstrate the many uh, problems that might emerge, I come to a case. Oops, what's that? <laughs> Sorry. That's a sonogram, that's the, my background image. Uh, so I don't know, the technician, is he there? Some, somehow this uh, PowerPoint jumped to, uh, to this one. Yeah. Was that all also before? Yes. All the time? Yes. Oh. Hmm. Behind you. I know it's not. Um. No, maybe it's this thing. Maybe that will help. That was um, the we'll find battery annoying. charge. There we go. Oh, yeah. So before I had this. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I'm, I'm a trained archaeologist in um, the pre-Hispanic America. And um, since the times of my MA thesis, I focus on musical instruments and music of um, pre-Hispanic Mesoamerica. Therefore, I... Why is the changed again? Come on, please stay. And um, a couple of years ago, I came about a researcher, David Lapman, who um, examined structures in Chichen Itza, that is uh, on the Yucatan Peninsula in southern Mexico, a Maya site. 